Welcome to the Momnificent Podcast. This is the place where we help parents live a happy, healthy life with their kids. We're going to show you how to... Well, I'm excited to have a moment this evening with Peter Halper. And Peter, it's good to see you again. It's very good to see you again. <laughs> so those in our audience who may not know, Peter was here with me three years ago when I just started my podcast. He was my second guest. <laughs> I was so excited. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't tell. And I get this call. For those of you who may not know, my husband and I have an Airbnb here. We're sitting in it now. And Peter reaches out and he's like, we need a place to stay. And I'm running across the country. And I was like, what is this guy doing? And um, I was so excited to meet him. And then we heard his story. And I'm going to give him a chance to share a little bit about that with you tonight. So uh, first, I just want to share that Peter is actually one man. And in three months this summer, he is on a bike, biking 9,000 miles, not just across the U.S. once, not just twice across the country, three times back and forth, if you can believe. When you go on the website and see this picture, it is mind-blowing. And why? To raise awareness and funds to end childhood cancer. Uh, with a goal of $3 million this year, funds from this ride will go to the Childhood Cancer Research and support families with a child in treatment and raise awareness for specifically neuroblastoma. So Peter, can you share with us the inspiration behind this remarkable journey to ride across the US not once, which blows me away, not twice, but three times to end childhood cancer and raise awareness about neuroblastoma. What is the inspiration behind this? Well, the, the inspiration is you, is Emery. I mean, ultimately, Emery, my great niece, um, passed away when she was three from neuroblastoma in 2017. And <coughs> um, at, at that point, before she passed, um, I was kind of the, I don't know how to say it, but the typical normal, maybe, she'll get better. You know, I just th I just thought she'll get better, and mm -hmm. the doctors will be able to fix her, and everything will be okay. So, to be honest, I was removed. You know, and and I was generally removed anyway from from it because I was a distant uncle. Yeah. Um, and you didn't live in the area, you said, right? I didn't live in the yeah, area. So, it was um, so so there were outside reasons, but she didn't live. And I went to the funeral, um, mostly to be with my sister, because it, my sister, Missy, is Emery's grandmother. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I saw Emery. And um, just to paint the picture a little bit, um, it was Jenna, Emery's mom, Zach, Emery's dad, all of the grandparents were standing in front of us who were in the pew mm -hmm. and um, and Emery was behind them in, in the casket that was the first time I saw Emery mm -hmm. and I don't something in me flipped that day switched and and utterly broke and I just I don't know how a parent does mm -hmm. what what Zach and Jenna had to do that day I don't I, s I don't know how that happens and that day, I, I realized that I, I was on the wrong side of love. Mm -hmm. I, I was, and that needed to change imme immediately. And it did, and, and I waited a little bit, and I offered to, to bike across the country, actually at that point to run across the country oh, yeah, right. for, for, um, for Jenna and her foundation to raise money for what she does mm -hmm. and to also raise money for research. And um, so that was the first time. And then the second time now that the biking that you mentioned is is a continuation of that. When I finished the run, um, we, had, we had raised $165,000, which is beyond my ability to do. In the fundraising scheme of things, that's not a lot of money. Um, childhood cancer needs Way more, way more money than mm -hmm. than one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars to solve that problem. Right. Um, but we hit that goal. But when I finished, 
I, I felt undone. I felt like this is not finished. Like I remember you telling me yeah, that. Yeah, I, we yeah. had that. We talked like a month or two after that run, and yeah. you were like, "There's something." There's something more. More. There's yeah. More. Yeah. You and, said that. And, and I felt driven to do more, and I'm getting goosebumps now as I'm thinking about it, and and more needed to be done. Yeah. You know, there only four. Per, 4% of the federal budget goes towards childhood cancer, less than 4%. Wow. And, and of that, it's nothing. It, it's, no, it's, it's nothing. Wow. And, and it's, so what's the big deal about it being nothing? The big deal is it's, it's, the pot is so small that it's just not enough money to fund the research that's needed and to fund the trials that's needed. Mm -hmm. And so somebody's got to do that. Yeah. You know, the, the pa parents are not understandably going to sit by and, and watch it happen. Yeah. Jenna's not sitting by and watching it happen. Right. So foundations like Emory's Memory Foundation, th they f come into that, yeah. that emptiness. And it is, it is literally moms and dads that are going to solve this problem. And that's, that's what Emory's Memory Foundation is, Emory's Memories Foundation is doing. Started on. Started on. Um, and so that's the basic, sorry. that's the basic why, you know, why yeah. am I here, why am I doing this? It's, it's ultimately to raise money. We need more money to solve this. And the cancer research is such a big, broad category. I think I remember you sharing this with me that to just narrow it down to neuroblastoma specifically, I think there was like, you had even shared, like there's Crickets. there's less and less and less even for that. And so this is very specific, right? Yes. To, am I saying it right? Neuroblastoma. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you, you, you I remember are you saying, saying that. It right. So, so it's, it's crickets, you know, that the more you get down into that bottom end of the funnel, it's, yeah. it's, it's less and less, but you know, to say that to a grieving mom, <gasps> less and less, that's not an acceptable answer, understandably, and it, and it's not acceptable to me. And you've anymore. spoken to those families. Yes, uh, I have n now during okay. the run, yeah. during the ride, in between. Yes, I have met many, li like this ride itself. W we are riding for seventy six very precious sons and daughters and every day I will hold up a card and we either remember or honor I love a that. child with I, cancer. I and saw that picture on Facebook and I it just gave me the chills. It's yeah. one of my favorite parts of, the, of this ride. It's my favorite part of the ride. I mean I'm too. not there to meet the people who yeah. welcome you at different stations yeah. I hear that happens along the way but but just to be an observer and see that on Facebook and you're standing there yeah. with that picture and I'm just like and are they all living or are they, some of them have passed? Some of them have passed. So okay. the way we, we word that is um, like, I'll read the card and I'll say Emery forever three um, stage four neuroblastoma. That's what she passed from. And then I'll say what she wanted to be. And, and then and then if it's a child that's living, we will say, you know, we'll say, um, I'm trying to think of the name. Um, Who's the Mar name tomorrow that um, you're going to meet? Marissa. Marissa. Yes, Mar tomorrow, Marissa. Right? And yeah. I can't remember her age, but she's she's um she's still a living. young teenager, still yeah. still living and, and doing well. She just rang the bell, which is a what does that mean? Sorry. Um, it's, it's I think at the five year point. Oh wow. Uh, and I could be totally wrong if it, about this, but at some point, there is a. It's a milestone, oh. and, and it's a it's a big deal, and it's a good thing. Oh, man. And, and from what I saw on social media, she was very well supported, oh. and she got during the bell. So I'm I'm wow. gonna meet her dad for the second time tomorrow, and I believe I'm gonna get to meet Marissa. And when we can, we'll have the family read the card, and we've done that a couple of times oh, that's as so well. Special. So I'll just stand to the side, and they read the card for their their precious son or daughter. And I love that. The card reading is. M my favorite part of this and meeting the parents yeah is sometimes it's obviously a hard part but it's also a mess a very necessary part because yeah. that's where people like me learn what what is it actually like you know we we don't know yeah i, I didn't know right. and i still don't know we all lost i'm still learning our own kid yeah exactly yeah and so there are some very courageous brave parents that open up 
and they share what it's like. Mm. And we've we've met some amazing kiddos, I- incredibly brave. And I can only imagine what a parent would feel seeing you, who we don't know, and y- you're doing this and recognizing our child. Like to me, that is just mm. um, the ultimate beautiful picture of love because mm. you just I feel like you just don't see that much these days right and it's just it's amazing it's beyond inspiring it's beyond words that I feel like can describe what it is that you're doing um, what are some of the most challenging moments you've encountered so far so you started in San Diego July 7th is that what you said no I'm Oregon yeah, you a little bit more north. Oregon, Oregon sorry. Yes, July okay. 7th, right? Yeah. 2023. Yeah. This summer. And what would you say are some of the most challenging moments you've encountered so far? Um, well, I'll leave the most challenging to last, but okay. just, you know, basic, you know, heat's been an issue. Um, f- nutrition um, for the crew, for Drew and, and myself has been a major issue because we're we're living in a pickup truck basically out of a pickup truck and with a cooler you know so no stove no kitchen and um and we're we're thankful to be being able to do this but that's just the challenge you know is nutrition um but the the hardest thing for me has been a, a lesson that i'm struggling with and and that's you know we we grow up at least i grow up grew up thinking we have unlimited energy, you know, mm-hmm. like it's going to last forever and, and I can do everything, you know, I can, I can hold all the things <laughs> that I need to hold mm-hmm. and, and I'm realizing almost too late on this, um, that I can't. Oh, wow. Um, and so it, it's a hard, it's been hard for me to, I mean, first of all, people that love me have spoken into this before I realized it and said, hey, Pete, we, we need to do this. And my wife said it, Drew said it, Jacob said it, everybody said it. And I pushed for another week and a half, two weeks before I actually conceded and said, yes, I need to let go of, of this thing that I was holding on that was ultimately preventing interactions like this yeah, you from were, happening. And, yeah. and this is why we're out here, you know? I know. So so for for me to get in the way of that is not a good thing. And, and it's not that I was getting in the way with it, of it, but I, I was so focused on the miles. Right, you had this idea, like, I've got to go, what was it, 100 and... 128 miles you were a like, day. like, i got to do this every day. And if I don't, like, get, like, do that part, you know, besides, is that right, that then maybe you would you would ride shorter and just ride in the truck longer, right, to get to the next You're set. You're basically exactly yeah. right. And My so concern you, was that if, okay, so I'm not gonna do 128 today, so I have more time to meet the moms, meet the dads, yeah. meet the kids, talk with people like you. Yeah. Um, my concern was if I'm not doing it, at, at what point does a parent say, oh, so I'm not worth it yeah. now? You know, and I, I, I want them to know that they're worth it. I think, they're worth it. I think they know. They're I believe worth 128. that they know. They're worth 300. Yes. I cannot ride across the country enough times to express how much they're worth it. Yeah. But I can't hold it all. Right. You know, so something had to go. And yeah. And thanks to people around me that gently spoke into that, we eventually made a change. And mm-hmm. the goal is still 128 a day. But if the 128 doesn't happen, it's okay. Yeah. And I'm okay with that too now. But it's, it's hard for me to let go because I, I am concerned about the messaging. Yes. And I, I, you had shared that earlier and, and it made me think of how wise and actually that was like some wisdom came out of that thought because mm-hmm. it's in those moments when you can connect with people that they feel that connection and then they share with someone else that connection and that's what spreads almost the message of it maybe even more than someone seeing the picture of you riding, riding, riding for miles. I think it, I think it does, because um, the, the truth is, when I'm riding my bike, nobody else is out there. 
yeah you, you know so that heart to heart you know that like you and I have felt when we've connected that I've yes you know I'm so thankful that I got to meet your husband that I know we have, that I we know. have felt um it's I, such a beautiful it wouldn't happen like this, right this honestly probably wouldn't be happening because I would be stressing about or you'd have rolled in bed. at 11 p.m. and we would have already been in bed or we something like been in that bed already, yeah so and for those listening, Drew is the cameraman who you can't see behind the scenes at the moment. Uh, and Jacob is um, Peter's son. And so he, Peter started on the West Coast. We are currently sitting in Delaware. He's come once across the country, and then he's going to start back and come back again, which just blows my mind. Um, so along your ride, you share a tribute to each child, like you said, mm -hmm. with neuroblastoma. And, um, and you told us about one of those children. And can you share a positive change from the money raised so far that you know of? Um, I know you were here three years ago raising the money like you mentioned. Is there something that, that you can share with the audience of something that you know that they've done with, with that money that well, has? Well, uh, sure, I wish Jenna was here that she could, because she is the one that hands out the money. Oh, um, And wow. I would love for That's her to. That's such a cool Yeah, experience. I would love for her to share that. but. I do know what she does with oh, okay, it, and, yeah. and, and in a nutshell, what Emory's Memory Foundation does is Jenna steps into that space now that she was once in when she went mm -hmm. with when her family went through what they went through with Emory. So, as as you can maybe imagine, mm -hmm. your child is you're told the worst. Your child has cancer. You start going through that that life treatments treatments are many times in different hospitals far away from where the parents live mm. and ultimately there's a financial burden on on the families that's caused be just yeah. because of the logistics Nobody's and the life and, for that and that nobody plans for that and yeah and why would you plan right. for that and and ultimately a lot of times it means you know both parents a lot of times are working but your child can't go to the hospital alone. Right. So who's going to go? Yeah. And in the end, a lot of times one parent ends up letting go of their job. Sure. The other one keeps it. One stays with right. the child. That the is one their job now. That's their job for the insurance, which is yeah. paying for this. So there's a huge financial burden is yeah. what I'm getting at. Emory's Memory Foundation steps into that. Uh -huh. And so, you know, when we receive donations, Jenna gets to turn around and say, hey, look, we got your rent this month wow. we got your mortgage this month wow. we got your food bill this month um, and even sometimes it's presents for the kids which at first might sound trivial you know but that might be the first time in months that that child smiles and laughs and think about that as a mom yeah seeing your child smile for the first time in months oh my gosh right so yeah. So it, it ranges from something that seems as benign as a gift to, you know, as practical and big as paying hotel bills, paying like the other things that I had mentioned. Yeah. Wow. And, and Jenna also has a, a presence now with a lot of moms and dads that are going through this. And I, I have heard her share that, you know, she's somebody that they can talk to. Yeah. You know, she's been there. Mm -hmm. um, and. And I am more than happy to throw myself behind a foundation like that. Yeah. I have no hesitation to ride across the country and raise money for Emory's Memory Foundation. Yeah. Half the money we raise, she's going to keep and give away to families. Um, and the other half is going to go towards research to beat childhood cancer. Yes, beat childhood. That's right. Beat yes, childhood it, cancer. Yes, that's right. Yes. You link up with them. Yes. I remember that yes. now. Yes, and I personally know the executive director of Beat yes. Childhood Cancer. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Peter, how did you prepare yourself physically and mentally for this three-month ride? There was some training for the riding. Um, okay. Long story short, um, I trained for the first three days of, of the ride. So, you know, my ride was based oh. on 128 miles a day. So okay. I gradually built up my mileage to a three-day okay peak training event in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, where I'm from, and I did three 128 mile days. Um, so there, you know, there was a lot of miles building up to that. It wasn't okay. just, hey, I'm gonna go out and you ride you my bike. You can't, right? Yeah. 
I can't. Maybe somebody else can, but I, I can't. I, <laughs> Probably most I, people can't. <laughs> I need I needed to train for that. And I haven't always been a biker. I was a you know, I was a runner. I still think of myself um well as somebody who runs, yeah. you know. Even and I'm biking with running shoes on. Still, oh, you wow. know, like so not even like the clip ons, which I, I think I'm not even using the clip ons. Or a little bit easier yeah, than my husband I, I, I get, say. Yeah, I get so many questions about when people <gasps> oh, look at that, they're wow. like, Why are you wearing That's tennis harder. Shoes? That is harder. I I don't think so. You don't? No. Oh, but oh, I do. But, but that's okay. <laughs> you can but, keep your running shoes. Thank you. on. <laughs> so as you've been riding across the country, were there any places or moments that left a lasting impression on you during the ride that you want to share with us something? That stands out oh like, or just pick one I know there are probably many there's so many I, know. I mean there's beauty tons of beauty scenery um, oh wait you were telling us about hmm. what you learned about the heart in Nebraska <gasps> I mean that's sure, probably wasn't can, what you were thinking but that was so cool can you share that that's a that's a good one <laughs> that was neat. Um, I can hold on one second <laughs> <laughs> gotta love Technology. electronics <laughs> I'm sorry, that's probably not the one you were going to say, but like that was so cool. Really no, I, I'm glad you brought it up because there's, it's hard for me sometimes to pick. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I want to share what's on my heart, but I'm also like, what would they like to hear? Um, you know, yeah. so. And that some, touched us. So maybe. Yeah. So let, let's talk about that. That's a good that. one. That's good. I love that bring one. It up and I'll yeah. <laughs> Learned about the heart. Can you tell us that story? Sure. I, I'd love to share that story because it, it was, it was, um, uh, it was a, t a lesson on my heart, you know. It was God saying, you need to learn a little bit more about other people's hearts. And we were going through, you know, when, I, when I've traveled through Nebraska, you know, I love the people of Nebraska, but there's a section of Nebraska that I think is famous for being kind of like, I can't wait to get to the end of it, you know? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's not very inspiring, Exciting. I guess. But I was in a section of Nebraska that I had never been in before and it was beautiful gorgeous there was parts of it that looked like the mountains in Colorado it didn't oh, have yeah. the big mountains but it it had the rock formations the oh. pine trees the feel everything yeah. and so I was r riding through there and I was like it just hit me that our hearts are a lot like the state of Nebraska and and I when I do stuff like this, I never know where I'm going to land on somebody's heart. You know, I might land on a spot in your heart that is bristly, you know, and and hard to be in. You know, and we just want to get through it and get to the other side. Or I might land on a part that's we want to stay and visit for a while, you know, because it's beautiful. And but the bottom line is, regardless of what part I'm on, that's not the whole heart, you know, and. And I don't ever want to judge a heart because I, at that moment in time, that small space in time, I happen to land on the bristly part, you know? I want to stay there because mm -hmm. it's that's not all that there is to that person. That's not all that there is to me and my bristly parts, you know? And, mm -hmm. and that was just a little lesson from the state of biking through the state of Nebraska. I just, I just, made me think our hearts are like that you know it, it reminds me um uh so being a school principal mm -hmm. with a lot of women staff mm -hmm. we it gets unique at times and sometimes we we don't always um see eye to eye and it can be challenging mm -hmm. especially if there's a recommendation maybe i want to make for a teacher and sometimes the teachers doing the best that they can really believe what they're doing mm -hmm. is like the way it should be and it can, can be difficult and when you shared that, it reminded me of a teacher where it, it, I've had a difficult time because I've had to say things that I believe are right and mm -hmm. she sees differently and, and that's just really hard. And, and it's kind of, I feel like it's severed our relationship mm -hmm. a little bit. And, and, I, and I just made the decision to just keep loving her mm -hmm. and keep loving her. And as difficult as, as it was and it kind of felt uncomfortable, I just decided to, uh, every day is fresh and over time and it's been year mm -hmm. after year and I just, I just end up loving her and, and she had some health things happen and, and, and I would just text her, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm thinking of you. Are you okay? Can I do anything for you? You know, and over time, months, and I, I think it probably took like a year wow. to the point where like she really like we're in a better place and, and, 
And, and I think it just reminded me what you said because sometimes people, I think maybe you can help me remember what you said. Like you, the, the way they're showing up, uh, it could be protecting the little bit left that, remember that part? Yeah. How did, we, how did you say that? Um, well, it, I just, I think that's sometimes that part where we land on their heart, you know, that space that is difficult to be in. Um, it, that might actually be uh, their way of protecting okay. that that part of them that is, you know, dear to them and precious and and precious to us yeah. too. And you know that part has been hurt before and yes. threatened before, and and, and it That's makes it. it makes at least for me it makes it okay to sit right where I'm at with them. Yes, you know, and that's what spoke okay. to me because I was like, you could take the way they're acting and get offended at it. Yeah, and because I just chose to keep loving as difficult as it was a little bit between us, and she didn't mm -hmm. agree with me and whatever it was, but to just choose to keep loving, now there is beauty coming out. And I think mm -hmm. when you said that, I was like, she was probably just protecting something that might have felt her. At, you know, you just yeah. don't, you just you don't, don't know, know where people are coming you from, right? Know. And that's why I always think I don't owe anybody but love. Mm -hmm. And there's been people in my life that we've had difficult things, and I always just think life is as hard. Life is hard. I don't yeah. need to add to that by yeah. thinking worse of you. Yeah. So, you know what? I don't know what life is happening for them, but life is just hard. So I don't owe anybody but love. Yeah, I like and, that. Um, yeah, I just I appreciated yeah. what you said because it made me think of that, and I I just I love the way that you put it in, and what mm. what you picked up through Nebraska yeah. was just a beautiful thank you Nebraska picture <laughs> and story of it. Yeah, I just I love that you shared mm. that. So your son is joining you on this mm. ride yeah. across the country. I thought he was coming the whole time, but you were explaining he just came from this stretch across the country once. I thought he was riding with you, but you <laughs> you helped me understand yeah. that he's <laughs> riding the truck. That yeah. you know, um, and what. What message would you like to leave with the audience and supporters who are deeply inspired? I know they're deeply inspired by your dedication to this cause. That's an easy one. If you, you know, that's why we're doing this is to get people to, you know, to stop, mm. to stop. And if you can listen, listen. And if you are listening and you feel something tugging on your heart to act on that, and, and I'm not going to say what that is, you know, because I don't know what, mm. how God's speaking to your heart right now. And it's not for me to say, but if you hear that and you feel that tugging, you know, whether that's, you know what, I'm going to donate to Emory's Memory Foundation, or I'm going to, I'm going to share this podcast, you know, I'm going to share mm. Karen's podcast. Um, then do that. Don't wait. Mm. Don't, don't wait. Just act do it whatever that whatever that is and you're you know it, you don't have to ride across the country three times i'm i'm doing that for different reasons you know than what your reasons might be and whatever but, you do it's not anything less than something else like whatever someone does in the littlest way it all makes a difference and it might not be running across like oh. it might not be this big thing but just every little thing is something a, 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 so don't put don't put like a um, like they say there's no there's no rating scale of pain like when right. when people go through things it's not like oh that pain's worth pain is pain and it's it's like this whatever comes to you to give Peter has in his heart to give this whatever you is in your heart yeah. to give it's so all that would be what I would say is exactly yeah, what like you're that. you're so what you know reiterating so well is mm -hmm. You know, listen to that voice or your heart or that feeling, you know, however you phrase that. If you are inspired because of this ride, go out in the world and and my phrase I I love is live a life given. And that's mm -hmm. that's me. I'm living my life given and, and it's highly focused on pediatric cancer and it's even more focused on the moms, um, the dads too, but the moms are the most vocal usually. Um, so they capture my attention a lot, a lot quicker sometimes, which I, maybe that's sad, but it's 
how it is. So that would be the one thing I would, I'm glad you asked that, you know. Well, when you said um, kind of go with what comes up for you, mm -hmm. first, that's my interpretation oh, of that. Well, that's perfect. Go then. with what comes up for you. It, okay. it reminds me of like a week ago when your wife was texting me like, mm -hmm. Peter's coming in, he's coming in this date, and we were making plans for you to stay here. Mm -hmm. and, and I just had the random idea to put the picture of you on our Facebook page for our, our, oh, yeah. our Airbnb yeah. here, Whispering Oak Mansion, and, and put Drew's YouTube channel and the links to the Emery's Foundation, you know, and I was like, oh, look God. who's coming in a week, this guy, he's traveling, you know, he's, he's biking yeah. across, you know. Thanks for and, doing that. And, and because I did that, because it was just a thought that mm -hmm. I acted on, because it came up in me to do mm -hmm. in that moment, um, look, like my neighbor who loves to follow us on Facebook, you know, she texts and she's like, is he there? Oh, Can I so meet nice him? And we her. just got to go yeah. meet her tonight. Yeah. And, and you were saying her hug was just, just really Yes. Yeah. I, special. you know, those the hugs that we get, I, I love them because you can, you know, not only you're physically, you know, receiving a hug from somebody, but right. there, there is something you can feel when you hug somebody and it doesn't have to be a hug either. You can feel it you know, this close, right. um, or this close, it can, mm. I, I like to call it a spark, I've heard it called other <laughs> things, um, we were and there are other I terms for it, but I it's, like it's this brief, you know, intimate moment of realizing that, you know, we're connected, we're not that different, mm. and we need each other, we really need each other. And I call it my, the kindred spirit, you, every you time, call I, it your kindred every spirit, time yes. I do a podcast, I meet guests for the first time a lot of the times yeah. on the podcast, in the episode, and in the interview, and at the end, I just am like, I feel like you're my kindred spirit. Yeah. Like it's just it's so special. Um, mm -hmm. So your, I feel like your ride should go into the Guinness Book of World Records. Did they reach out to you yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know why. No. I, I don't know why I had that thought. <laughs> Well, that's a good reason. Anyway, <laughs> I think it should go in the Guinness Book of World Records because it's no. such an incredible achievement. And mm -hmm. I am so humbled, and I'll speak for my husband and I, we are so humbled to have met you. I mean, mm -hmm. your dedication, it's so admirable. And um, yes, like you said, it mm -hmm. just, if you're in that space, or might not be today, but there's a space where I feel like someone cannot hear your story and not somehow inside of them say, what can I do to help mm -hmm. support that, you know? And um, I know that's how I feel. And so that's why we're so excited to host you here again. I was so excited when you said you would make it back. I was like, yes. Um, so how can someone listening support or find and follow you? Going to the website is the easiest, okay. emerysmemoryfoundation.com. Um, Again, Emery was my great niece, so the name Emery's Memory Foundation should be pretty easy to remember. Mm -hmm. and, and on there is all sorts of ways you can donate, help. I mean, Jenna's very clear about, mm -hmm. you know, how she would like people to participate, you know, and, and help her and help others. And um, so go there, Emery's Memory, Emery's Memory Foundation com, yeah. And then another great place to go to is Be the Good movement is the YouTube channel is the YouTube channel yeah, so I'll, I'll put those links okay. in the bottom those are two great places to go to to find out what you can do if you're interested in specifically helping us but if you're interested in just you know hearing inspiring stories then the channel the is a great channel. place to go to too because there's going to be you know it's not just me that's going to be on that mm -hmm. channel thankfully it's not just me there will be other stories on that as well. I love it, yeah. inspiring. Well, Peter, so. you'll have to come back again and bring your wife <laughs> next time. I will, you know, I'll never <laughs> <to> forget. stay here. <laughs> the first time we came here, it was, it was during the run and we hadn't met yet and we had not seen your beautiful place. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful neighborhood. There's nice houses all around. But you don't see this coming up to it. So when you drop down into this driveway and you look up, there is this beautiful place that you're <laughs> stepping into. And I'll never forget, we were greeted by you. And right away, I, I could feel your, your heart, your energy. And 
and your compassion for people. Like, we didn't talk about it. We didn't know anything about each other, but I could feel that in this place and in you. Mm. And we got checked in. You showed us everything. And I'll never forget the, the I forget the room that, the name of the room presidential that we were in. Presidential suite. Okay. <laughs> you put us in the presidential suite, and it was, I was so tired. I had been running all day, and it was like going from, mud to heaven you know like Aww. the contrast was just so extreme that <laughs> it was like oh, oh, you know and it was fall then yeah. and I remember November. opening the balcony door and stepping out and it was raining I could hear the raindrops falling I could smell the leaves and it was so quiet here and so peaceful and and it was all backed by a beautiful beautiful soul and mm -hmm. so it was we, we definitely will come back, you yeah. know, sometime. I, I, would, I want Robin to meet Peter and, yes. and, of course, to see you again. Yes. Well, it was just, I don't have words to describe how awesome it is just to be here again in person and, and be able nice. to it's have nice spent to the evening together and talk and for people to hear more of the story. Thank you. And, um, yeah. Thank you so for doing that. To be continued. To be continued. Until next yes. time. Yes. I'll see, I like to say, I, I'll see you soon. <laughs> And I say goodbye. I'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it again. All right. Thanks. That's all we've got for this episode of the Momnificent Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be honored if you would subscribe and rate if you really liked it. I know 